on terms of introducing anything else. Is there, is there uh, well, I'm surprised you didn't. Did this not make the feed in the uh, UK like it did in the States that uh, apparently somewhere in the UK a 12 year old girl got cussed out by iOS? I never heard this. Never heard, no. Yeah, apparently this happened in the UK. A 12 year old girl was in a store playing with the i phone in Siri and she like made a query to her and it basically told oh, her to yeah I heard something <laughs> like that I didn't click on it because it sounded very kind of uh, tabloidy kind of. <laughs> no, it, it happened it's just it, it, you know it's nobody's really sure why it happened and the phone's kind of been sent back maybe it's an issue Maybe it's an Easter, an Easter egg of some sort. <laughs> That's a Easter very interesting egg. Easter egg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's just, uh, yeah. I, I, th I think it's ringing a bell now, that's, that story, but I, I, I think, like Roy, I probably wouldn't have clicked on it because it was like one of those I, I, unfortunately, unfortunately, I ignored it and ten people sent it to me like, fine, <laughs> I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> which, which paper was it in? Was it Daily Mail or something? It sounds a very, kind of probably a long headline somewhere. Oh... Young girl hears obscenity from Apple. How dare they? I don't even remember which it was in right now. <laughs> in any case, uh, well, Microsoft is completely out of the race, and I spoke to a friend of a good friend of mine yesterday who, who actually was a self-professed uh, iPhone, not iPhone fan, he was an Apple fan, and he would stand up for like a whole day waiting to get the latest iPhone, a whole day, and guess what? And he says, he got a surprise for you, and out of his pocket he pulls a Samsung phone, uh, with Android on it, so I said, oh, I love Android, it's great, and he just, he dumped his iPhone. So, it, you see, you see the trend, and this is probably why Apple is actually trying to sue the competition, because, you know, people are actually defecting, they get a bigger screen, they get more uh, features, they get, uh, you know, actual features in, in terms of software, they also pay less, as far as I can tell, you know. I, I think the market is such now, where people have got so much choice, then you have the ability to swap and change. I, I think, uh, I mean, uh, conversely, and to be fair, I know people that would swear by the uh, iPhone, not because they're fans of Apple per se, but because they actually like the phone itself. And well, they got... and, and there are, th there is one downside to Android, um, and that is its diversity. And that is, you have two types of salespeople in the phone stores. You have the person who will sell you whatever phone makes them the best commission, and then you have the f person, to me three, and then you have a person who will ask you some questions and figure out which phone is best for you, and then you have the person that wants to sell you the phone they want. And in some cases, when it's the Android phone, you know, they're a geek, they want the geek phone. So they sell somebody who doesn't know a pixel from a frying pan, this uber power user, high-end Android phone, and people think that's what Android is. No, that's that's that phone. Uh, and if anybody, I've noticed this in the last six months, people who, if they had a friend that that happened to them, they think they need an iPhone because iPhones are advertised and their friend had a bad Android experience. Yeah, yeah I, I think it, it's advertising, but it's also comfort zone. I and mean, you've got to remember that there's a, a vast majority of people who really don't have the interest in the inner workings of these gadgets, what they run on, what, uh, what sort of actions the companies behind them have been up to, and really just want a phone to do X, Y, and Z. They don't care about uh, open formats, they don't care about source code. And uh, just going back to very quickly to a previous point we made right at the beginning of the show when um, Roy was saying about Google very quick to release the source code, do we really believe that for 99.9% .9 of the users that that actually makes any difference? It's not for the users. It's yeah, not but I'm just for the users. Yeah. No, but I'm, what I'm saying is the popularity of Android has got nothing to do with whether the source code is released or not. Maybe. Uh, it does uh, I'm, I, I'm not so sure about that. I think some of the popularity for Android is Start the with. Android advocates. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying. Yeah. The, the advocates would have never gotten started yeah, if it yeah. wasn't a base on Linux. It just what be. I mean is, is the mainstream consumer now that they are buying Android devices has no interest in the source code whatsoever. And if you say source code, then nine times out of ten, they probably even know, won't even know what it is. No, no, that's fine. Um, it's the same. The same with Linux. They think it's free. Like it doesn't, doesn't cost anything. That's that's fine. But then again, you know, the, the mainstream user, as a rule, thinks Windows is free because it comes packaged with the computer and it's all there ready. And the price they see in the shop isn't with. Well, 
most of them would move away from Windows because of viruses and things like that. So you have to talk about practical reasons for them to move, and that, that again, that's that's quite fine. Uh, you know, being realistic and pragmatic about it, uh, that's just how people perceive things. You couldn't make them just realize the source code is. Uh, but, then, but then you say you're advocates of the Android system and assisted the purchase and spread of Android as a platform. Yeah, I completely agree. But then what happened with Apple? Because that got is uh, seeing quite a bit of popularity now. Apple doesn't release its source code; it's iOS. So who's advocating that? The um, yeah, Apple fanboy. Yeah. Well, exactly. So you'd still get Apple, you'd still get Android fanboys, even if the source code wasn't released, and we'd still find ourselves in the same position. Well, 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 but that's the thing. The the primary source of the Android fan card is the uh, Linux fan card, who is, you know, oh man, it's it's, it's an open utopia, man. It's just, <laughs> just totally, man. <laughs> If that didn't exist, we'd still get the same advocates that Apple has, presumably, uh, in that they like the Android platform and they pr- promote it and advocate it. And, you know, Google's got the budgets to um, promote it adequately enough, just like Apple. So I don't see we'd be in any different situation now um, in the phones, personally. And like I say, I, I stand by 99% of the people, which I, I think you would agree, now the consumer has no interest in source code whatsoever, if they even know what it means. Um, which, Speaking of 99% of people, the... I mean, that's my thing, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a market share of Linux on desktop is said to be growing based on all kinds of criteria. So you look at the uh, Wikipedia pages and some more kind of web survey things. They say it's like, you know, up by 50% in one year. So you know it's still growing, even even though Ubuntu is not is not making headlines anymore. Or it doesn't make as many headlines as it used to be. As it used well, to con- make, but conversely, I, I would say that Android has got to have an effect on... Uh, Linux on desktop. I think people have. Oh, but it's that. counted differently in the metric. It's yeah. counted specifically oh. as Android. But you know what's got one percent of the market share? Uh, Windows Phone. Windows so. Phone. That's right. <laughs> and and now there are rumors about Microsoft buying the mobile division of Nokia, which they in turn deny. I think there is a meeting in Vegas with uh, uh, the new guy. I think it's called Lease or something. Uh, the guy in Microsoft who's in charge of phones. Uh, there's going to be Balmer and Elop, which is supposedly from Nokia, but it's not really from Nokia. It's just a mall company. And also, Microsoft started bribing some shops to sell or to recommend the Windows Phone, so that that's a subject of controversy. Well, and, and it's now known as part of the Android patent raids that Microsoft was doing uh, that they were also basically that was part of their terms of settlement with every single manufacturer. You will now make Windows phones. Yeah. So well, I think it, they. Uh, are you sure it's part of the settlement? It wasn't just part of the kind of announcement that they made at the time to make it look amicable? Or? No, that was part of the settlement. And right. Basically, the, the criteria is we do this undisclosed settlement, you don't disclose, you sign the NDRs, and as part of the settlement, you must now make Windows phones also. They were basically blackmailing all the manufacturers to make Windows devices. Well, I mean, that, that makes it an even more expensive exercise for the, for the manufacturers because when they can't shift them, as the 1% market share shows, um, they're going to be further at a loss. Um, and they don't actually achieve much by signing those agreements either because Microsoft is now using Nokia's patents. They pass into a company uh, that's called Mossad and it's based in, uh, in Canada. Uh, it's basically a patent troll. And they pass it through Luxembourg because they want to try and pass it from Nokia uh, from Europe basically to the United States or to Canada directly. Uh, there, is, there is an investigation going on because it's very obvious what they try to achieve there. So I think because they've got some eyes watching what they do, they're quite afraid now. So maybe they'll kind of back off from actually trying to send trolls after Google. Well, after if they're smart, there will because, I, and, and you know what, I, I thank Barnes & Noble for yeah. exercising legal breach and basically saying, you know what, screw our non-disclosure. We know it's illegal, but we don't think it's right, so we're going to break it. And they yeah. contacted all the proper people and said, oh, we think you should look into this. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, well, the only other bit of news before we finish, because um, we said we're keeping this show shorter, um, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, Roy, have you got any other news on... Well, the, the, there was a bit of a... I think they had about 200, maybe 2,000 units somewhere in eBay or... Kind of yes. a few units. Yeah, they they were auctioning them off. I didn't yeah. get them. I wish I had. <laughs> and and they, they the bidding was up to almost three thousand, but I think it's just for one of them. Yeah, I I, yeah, I, I, I think maybe it's just a PR stunt or something. But well, I, 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 I don't know for a twenty five quid uh, 
PCB. For 25 bucks, I would have bought them, not for what they were getting bit up to. I, I think they're a great board. Uh, I'll look forward to when they're out of beta and they're available. For those of you who have no idea,